Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave to your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my so they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 8. We will read responsively, whole verse by whole verse. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adore him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You'll be seated. Good morning. Good morning. And Happy New Year. Happy New, happy New, New Year. Year. Thank you. It's amazing to realize that it's already here and we're already in the midst of it. And that is one of the fun things about this time of the year, all the festivities, all the holidays, the celebrations that take place. Um, it is a whirlwind of activity and busyness, but it's all good stuff here. So it's a good celebration. And our church calendar also is filled with celebrations um, throughout the year, but particularly now as well. Throughout the year, our litur me, throughout the year, our liturgical calendar has what we refer to as feast days, days of particular significance when we celebrate martyrs or saints, people who have lived exemplary lives, and also moments within Jesus's life that we mark and we remember on particular occasions. So last week, obviously, was the feast, the celebration of Jesus' birth on Christmas Day. And today we actually have another feast called the Feast of the Holy Name. You'll notice that the front of your bulletin has that written on it. And the Holy Name is a particularly important one, too. As we heard in our Gospel reading just now, it takes place about seven days after a child is born. A male child in ancient Israel was brought to the temple and about a week after they were born, they would be circumcised as a, or, and given their name as a way of fully welcoming and including them within the community of faith, <laughs> making them part of the synagogue. So just like how now we typically baptize infants you know, fairly soon after the birth, back then it would be circumcision and a celebration of their name. And for us Christians, this celebration is um, uniquely important in a very different kind of way. I've talked before, I think, to some of you on sermons and on other occasions about the role of names throughout Scripture, how for many people in, as biblical figures, when they encounter God, their names are changed. Abram becomes Abraham, Sarai becomes Sarah, right? And if we think about Moses, there's also a kind of name change or name revelation that takes place. If you can all think back to the book of Exodus, Remember Moses, the beginning of his journey, he's out in the wilderness, he's traveling and he sees a burning bush. He turns aside and he has this encounter with God. And God tells him, you know, go back to Egypt to free my people. And Moses asks him, well, if people say, who sent you? What name should I give? Who should I say sent me? Do you all remember what God says? He says, I am who I am. Right. It's kind of an ambiguous name. Right? God isn't um, a specific individual, he doesn't give a specific name, but I am what I am. God is unknowable and beyond comprehension. That's the response that Moses is given. It's almost ambiguous. And the significance of today, of the holy name, is that today is the kind of counterbalance of that. Because whereas before, we didn't know God. We didn't know God's name or know God face to face. Now, as of today, the celebration and the feast of the Holy Name, we do. 
God reveals God's self to us. God reveals God's name to us. And today, we hear, we remember, and we discover the name of God is Jesus. We know God's name. Which is the first step to having a relationship, a connection with somebody, knowing their name, knowing them personally, individually. And just as God tells us God's true name, God also knows our true name and who we are. And by that, I don't just mean what we're called, what our names happen to be, be it, you know, Nancy or Carol or whatever, or any nickname. But God knows our true names, something that is written on the very fabric and DNA of our souls. Next week in our gospel, We'll hear of Jesus' baptism in the River Jordan, the Holy Spirit descending upon him. And the Holy Spirit says, this is my son, the beloved. Our true name for each and every single one of us is that. Our true name is beloved. Each and every single one of us is beloved by God. And that name that title, that identity, that is more powerful and that overshadows any other name or any other identity that we may previously have held. Whatever it is. Because there is nothing about us that is more important than our belovedness, that we are beloved by God. God reveals God's self to us in Jesus' name. And God is calling to us by our true name of beloved. This new year, 2023, wherever we are in our lives, whatever is going on, whatever our past holds, and whatever the unknown future holds for each one of us, this is a time for us to remember, to recall, and to celebrate and rejoice that we know God's true name, and that each and every one of us is called Beloved by God. Amen. Amen. Together, let us stand and proclaim the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people. Sisters and brothers, rejoicing in the love of God that has taken flesh among us in Christ Jesus, let us confidently bring to the Lord the petitions of our heart this Christmas, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the believing community throughout the world, especially those in positions of leadership, that they might always work to give glory to God and to bring peace to our earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church gathered in this place, that we might always bear the good news of God's living presence in our world, towards deepening of Christmas faith and living that, and living that faith in love, and in the diocesan cycle of prayer, the Feast of the Holy Name, the Reverend Dr. Matthew Seddon, the Venerable Connie Pepler. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those lost in the darkness of prejudice, hostility, and fear. For those burdened by the yoke of injustice, terrorism, hunger, and war. And for all our brothers and sisters in any need that the light and life that is the Lord might touch their hearts this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless and for the children born in the midst of poverty and pain, that there be room at the inn for all God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying among us, Grant Cook, Pat Johnson, Lydia Wente, Paige Sexton, Heather Duchess, Clint Hagen, Jen Hagen, Daryl Hartman, and Megan Leahy, Rachel Shoning, that your grace may abound and their spirits be renewed. And for those who care about, care for them, that the God whose love extends from the wood of the manger to the wood of the cross might bless them this day with the gift of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our thanksgivings and concerns, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All loving and gracious God, we thank you for gracing us with the gift of your Son. Confident of your continuing love for us, we have placed our needs before you. Hear and answer our prayers through that same Christ, newly born this night, our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Good morning again, St. Michael's. Good morning, good morning. A few brief announcements before we continue on with our service. First, just to let you all know, I am not going to be here next week, next Sunday. Um, I'll be out of town for a baptism. So um, Megan Wiles and Grace will be leading us in morning prayer at both 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock services. Thank you for doing that. Um, so just FYI, um, the services of morning prayer next week on Sunday. Our game nights will be on the 14th at 5 p.m. Um, so if anybody would like some time just to hang out, have some fellowship time, play some games, I'm guessing Euchre is going to make an appearance during that evening. Um, the 14th at 5 o'clock, <laughs> please be sure to join us. I'll do um, other games as well. So. Um, and finally, it's hard to believe that it's that time of year already, but our annual meeting is going to be coming up. Of course, this is the time when we as a congregation gather together for the business of the church. Um, so that is going to be happening at the end of February, February 26th, during the 10 o'clock service. There will still be an 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock service, and the annual meeting will be part of the service on that day. So I encourage you to come and join um, and be part of that conversation. And those were the only announcements that I had for this morning.
go ahead with the vote on the 15th, guys. On the 15th? Yes. Sunday morning brunch on the 15th. Thank you, Rita, for doing that. And apologies for it not being in the bulletin and the announcement, but thank you again. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs> up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. But chiefly are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. <laughs> Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. 
through Abraham and Sarah, who called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. The night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will come come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy, may the holy eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, and holy abiding spirit bless you forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Blue hymnal 99. <laughs> peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.